Hi class, this is number six on chapter three practice test. Suppose you flip two coins. What is the probability of getting at most one heads? Give the answer as a reduced fraction. So one way of solving this is by drawing out the tree diagram that is drawing and, and the tree diagrams really help you draw all possible outcomes. And by counting these outcomes, um, when you flip a coin, um, you're just as likely to get a heads as you are a tails. And so um, all, um, we can like, we can all, we can figure out, you know, what is like, what can um, result as, as, um, as it, what are all the different options and what are all the different outcomes that could happen when we flip two coins. So we can draw that and then we can just count the ones that have at most one heads. At most one heads, meaning that um, one or fewer, right? And in fact, we might think about it as a complement in this situation too. We, could, we always have, we could, if we could figure out what the complement would be, um, then that also might make it really easy for us to figure out what this answer is as well. This one way to attack this problem, but I won't worry about the complement at this moment. Let's just do the tree to tree diagram. If two coins, here's the first coin. It could be a heads or it could be a tails. And then the second coin, it could be a heads or tails. And that also, if it was a tails originally, then the second coin could be a heads or a tails. So that all the situations, now I can list at the end of each branch, if I follow each branch all the way to the end, I can see all the different situations that could possibly happen. So I could have a heads and a heads, that's one outcome. I could have a heads, then a tails, that's one outcome. I could have a tails and then a heads. That's an outcome or a tails and a tails. All of the ones that have at most one, I mean, um, heads, you can count them how many of the total outcomes, how many outcome, how many um, of these outcomes have at least one head. Well, it's one, two, three, there's three of these. And these are all equally likely outcomes, right? Because, um, well, because it's equally likely to, for it to get a tails as a heads, right? A heads or a tails doesn't matter. Like it's, um, so you're gonna get one of these four results. So I would say there's three results that have at most one Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, oops, not, not that one. At most one heads means like one head or less. So there's one, two, three outcomes that have one head or less out of the total four different outcomes. So I would say, um, what's the probability of getting at most one heads? Three out of four. <clears throat> so let's, a pause. And so that is the answer here, three fourths. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let me know. Um, let me, let me, I'm gonna pause it quick again. I wanna see if I can show you, I think um, of a second way to show you this. Okay, so here's another way that if you wanted to, you could think about it. Um, you could think about it as like a first event, the probability of a first event happening, and then a couple with the probability of a second event happening. And you have to think about, there's actually three different situations if, that we would be okay with, it would be a desired result. So we could, in order for us to have at most one heads, I'm sorry, 
that means the first one and only the first one could be heads. And then that means the second one could be tails. That would be a good result for us to be, that we'd be happy with. So I wrote down that. And then the next thing that we'd be happy with if to at most one heads would be a tails first and then a heads. That would be a happy um, result or a tails then a tails. So what I could do, any of these results would be a desired result. So I can find the probability of finding, of getting a hails heads combination or a tails heads combination or a tails tails. So if I, I, I'm actually finding probability of a heads tails or tails heads or a tails tails, right? Because those are all the things that would make us happy if, if, I want, that was my, if we were talking about at most one heads. So um, then what I did is I calculated the probability of getting a heads that's this HT, the probability of getting the HT heads and tails, uh, so probability of getting a heads was one half, and then probability of getting tails is one half. So you multiply that together and that's one fourth. So the probability of getting a heads first and a tails is one fourth. Then I did the same thing again. Here, the first one is a tails and this one is a heads. So then that would be one half times one half again, which is one fourth. And then getting a head, now this last one, you have to get a tails and a tails. So probability of getting a tails is one half, probably of getting a second tails is one half. So it's also one fourth, but because there's three different situations here, all having a probability of one fourth, the total probability of us getting one of these situations is three fourths. And so you can calculate it kind of this way, or like I said, you could calculate it and understand it by using the tree diagram. All right, um, either way. All right, so I, I, I hope that, that this made sense to you. Um, um, <clears throat> some of these, you know, the probability of getting a heads first times the probability of getting a tails first, those can't happen at the same time. So it's just a probability of H times probability of T, you know, and that's just a shortcut kind of method that we learn, you know, we could always try to count all the different outcomes and use a tree diagram, any type of probability problem. However, sometimes doing it this way, probability of heads times probability of tails is a little faster and easier. However, like I said, we have to think of all the different ways like um, that we could have been happy um, with getting with um, at most one heads. All right, um, please let me know if you have questions. Any questions? Bye.